Welcome to another video. I am Admas Kunfu from SuperSQA.com. I help people break into IT field or grow in the IT field by learning QA automation. In this video, I am going to show you how to install TestLink on your local machine. TestLink is a tool used to document test cases, a test case management tool, and it is pretty popular in the industry. In my, in my courses, my main goal is to give my students a hands-on experience using tools that they would use in the actual work in the actual field right so in test link is one of those tools so i want my students to have experience using it and practice creating test cases using the tool so i think it's a good idea for my students to be able to install it on your on their machine so they can have access for it at any time i also have it in the cloud they can access but this is good to have their own instance so uh, I'm making this video just to show everybody how to install TestLink on your local machine. All right, so let's get into it. So we're going to look at uh, an easy way of installing this. So let's first let's go to their homepage. If we just search for TestLink, right, in Google, you're going to find their homepage, TestLink.org, and there are a few links. The first one is get it from uh, SourceForge. You can do that as soon as you click on this, it's going to start to install. But let's go to their GitHub. A repository because there is more documentation and stuff over here okay so the first thing i want you to notice is by the time at the time i'm creating this video 1.9.2 is out and they're saying they're not going to release any more of 1.9 family so i'm thinking they're working on a 2.0 so by the time you see this you might have a 2.0 out and you know adjust accordingly the way you install it is most likely not going to be changed but if it is, I am going to make a video about it because my students need it. So here, there's a lot to read, but you don't really need to read uh, a lot. I just, I'm going to show you how to do it and I'm, it's going to be really easy. So what you have to understand is this is a web application. Whenever you are working on a web application, you need few components. A lot of times you need a web server. You definitely need a web server. You need a database if the application needs a database and you need some kind of programming language, whatever the application is built on. In this case, it is PHP. So if you go to system requirements, you can see what the requirements are. You need uh, a web server, Apache uh, 2.x, basically anything above 2. Uh, we need a PHP greater than 5.5, and we need one of those databases. Uh, we can use MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, or uh, Microsoft SQL, all right? We are going to be using SQL. So whenever you're working with a web applications like this, uh, uh, another example would be WordPress, right? In my, in my courses, we practice automation using a real e-commerce site on a real uh, social media site. And both those sites are created on WordPress and they're really easy. And this is the same, is the same theory, right? It's a web application, so it needs exactly those things, a web server, PHP, and a database, MySQL. So you can go ahead and, in, and download and install each one of those things if you know if you have the time and if you have the know-how mostly the know-how right being able to configure every everything is a little bit complicated but there are tools that come packaged right there's something like MAMP. MAMP is my favorite one that's what i want to use in fact let's go to the website MAMP. if we just search for MAMP, this is what i use the only thing the only thing the only con i can think of is uh, they have a pro version and they they promote it like crazy so you're going to see a lot of ads for it other than that it works really nice like this so after you install it, it looks like this on a windows it, it looks very similar the ui is different but it's very similar by the way i'm going to show this how to install test link on a mac but the process is exactly the same on windows so you don't have to worry about it just follow everything i'm doing on your own uh, platform okay uh, that's not going to be a problem. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to use MAMP and you can use XAMP, another popular one. XAMP is pretty popular, but uh, I decided to use MAMP for uh, different reasons. One of, them, one of them being MAMP uses MySQL, XAMP uses MariaDB. They're almost the same, but they're not, okay? All right, so we're going to do MAMP. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to download this repository. So you go to under code and download zip. If, if, if you're familiar with Git, you can clone it too. Just use Git to clone it. While this is downloading, if you want to get more information about how to install it under this docs, I can show you after we download it. So after and in docs, there is a document, a PDF that says test link installation manual. Okay, check that out. I found that more helpful than the actual instructions here. And I did a bunch of trial and error uh, to figure this out. And here I'm going to show you the errors. I'm not just going to show you the happy happy installation, right? I'm going to actually show you the errors that I faced so you know how to fix them. 
Okay, so if we click on this, it's going to extract it. It's a zip. You can just go to downloads as well. Let's see, it opened another one here. So it's in my downloads. I downloaded a bunch of times practicing for this, but you know, it's the same version downloaded. Let's copy that. For now, let's just click on copy. And we need to go to the document root. So the document root is whenever you have a web server, it needs to know where it's going to serve from, right? So if you have MAMP, uh, you go you go to preferences, you go to server, and you can click on open in Finder, and that will open it in Finder. If you never use MAMP, one thing I want you to notice in port, you have to you have to notice what port is using for the database and for the Apache for the web server. Uh, MAMP comes with Nginx also. That's another version of another brand of a web server. We're going to be using Apache now. Um, so notice this. Don't change it. Uh, you can, but if you're already using 888 for something else, like some other application is using it, then you can change it. Definitely don't use the default. I do not advise that. Okay. So uh, you go to server, you open, you click on open and finder. This will open up the root. In my case, it looks like it's here because I bookmarked it. It's under my favorite favorites, but it's going to be wherever you install it. And whatever you copy, you're going to paste it here. The, that's whatever we downloaded, right? Paste item. And rename it to whatever you want to rename it. I've, I have several installations of Testlink because I've been like preparing for this, uh, but there's no reason to delete it and stuff. So all you have to do is uh, um, rename it. I'm going to call it Testlink Two. Okay, and for this demo, I'm going to call it Testlink Two. And in this folder, you get, you, you see everything that Testlink needs. All of those are basically what you saw here in the GitHub, and you can also find the documentation uh, right there. Okay. And we're going to come back here and talk about it. So in map, let me cancel this. You can make sure you start the servers. Like when you click on the start here, uh, it will start the web server and the database. And if you click on web start here, it will open up the homepage for, for map and it gives you information. But we want to pay attention to the MySQL information because we have the database and the, the username and test it out, connect to it. I use MySQL workbench. That's my go to tool to connect to the database and I am connecting to it. As you can see, I just created this and create a new connection and uh, localhost and make sure you provide the, the port and you connect to it. In my case, I have a bunch of databases or a bunch of schemas. In your case, if it's your first time setting up map, you might not have anything. You just might have sys. This might be the only one you have. Okay. If you're able to connect, that means your database is up and running and you are good to go. Then what you want to do is you're going to go to localhost, the port, whatever port you're using, 8888 in my case, in the folder you just created. In my case, what did I call it? Test link 2, correct? That is, just to remind you, I'll go back here. Test link 2 is the folder. So I downloaded for GitHub, unzipped it, copied it to my document group, and just renamed it to whatever I want to name my website, my test link, my local test link, okay? So when you go to that page, it would automatically redirect you to an index.php page. Then it's going to just guide you from there. Then, then click on new installation, read the license and agree to it. If you do agree, click on continue. And here you're going to see some errors. So one thing that this one's don't worry about them for us, it won't affect us. And this one is telling you what kind of databases are available. In our case, we have MySQL and we want to use MySQL and we got an OK. So that's a good thing. We also have Postgres, but we're not going to use that. And we are uh, we do, we're getting an error saying my SQL, my Microsoft SQL is not there. We don't care. We just want to use uh, my SQL. That's good. But here we see failed. So that is a big deal. What it's trying to do is in the configuration, it has configured for the logs where the logs should go. Whenever an application is running, it's going to output logs, right? It's going to output information about what's going on with the application. Whenever you have a problem, that's where you're going to go to see what the problem is. That's a typical thing in, in, in an application. If a, if a program is designed properly, it's going to log stuff because whenever there is an issue, you got to go find it. So what this guy is saying is I can't find this folder. And you can see from the pad, this doesn't look like a Mac path, right? So but they have hard coded a Linux, Linux type of system in the configuration. So you have to change that. But that's also mentioned here in, in the document somewhere right here. It says security, you need to configure blah, 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 log paths and uh, these two things. Okay. So I'm going to show you the easy way to do that. I'm going to go back in here. 
So what this fails to do is it doesn't tell you what file it is being configured, where is the configuration coming from? Kinda you gotta kinda use common sense or you gotta have somebody like me telling you. So the configuration file for this is going to be, it's gonna be called config. Right, it's kind of straightforward, but there's so many files, it's, it's hard to like, if you don't have experience with working with different applications, that's not going to be like common sense. So this file here, config.inc.php, that's the one you want to edit. So you want to open this in any editor you want. So I'm going to open it in Sublime, all right? So it's open in Sublime and look for the folder that failed. So this guy, it's saying I can't find this. So this is configured somewhere in the config file. So config file is basically when the application is running, it's going to get all this information what to do and stuff from this. This is how the application is configured. So here it is configured to look for this folder. So all I did is command F for find or control F if you're on a Windows. And you can see it is configured here and we want to change this. So if we go back to our installation folder, this is our installation folder. There is actually a logs folder here. It's an empty one. So we want to use that. We want our application to log into there. So just copy the, copy the path for here. And on a Mac, you can hold down, you can right click and hold down option to get the full path. On a Windows, you just on the address bar, you can click it and you can just copy the path. Then come here and replace this. Make sure you add the, the slash at the back, at the end of it. Then there was another folder. That's the other one is this one, upload area. Let's, let's find that in the config. And it's right there. So let's go back to our machine and let's find it upload area let's get the paths and let's replace this all right by the way you can use any folder here whatever you want the application to like you can put you know my uh, like user slash documents whatever then the application is going to write into that folder but to keep it clean it's better to do it within the app wherever you have the installation but you can specify any folder here and you're telling it oh inst right into here and make sure you're it's able to write into that though like the owner of the folder does matter okay now we did this make sure we save it and all we have to do is refresh this page now it's going to do the check again and all the errors are gone so it's checking if the if the folder exists and if it's writable right when i was doing this on docker and when i was doing it on the cloud i used digital ocean uh, servers to to install things um i had i had it, this part was okay the folder existed so i created it but we couldn't write it because Apache runs as a user, www dash something, some, some username. But the folder was created by me, by root. So Apache could not write into the folder. So you might get an error here, but if you're doing it on a Mac or on a Windows like this, that's probably not going to be an issue. But if you get an issue saying, I cannot write to that folder, then you know what went wrong is ownership of the folder. You just have to change the owner of the folder to whatever the owner of the Apache is, okay? So everything is everything looks good right here. Then we click on continue. Now it's time to set up the database. We already configured, we already tested that the database works. We know that DB works, it's, it's up and running and we can connect to it. We know the password, we know the user, right? To remind you, you can get that. If you go to web start and go to MySQL, you get the port number, the username and the password, okay? It's socket also local host, but you don't need this. And it, it, it's pretty neat. neat. It shows you how to connect to the database using different programming languages. Okay, back to our installation page. So lo uh, database is local host. It tells you here clearly, if in case that your DB connection doesn't use a standard port. So for MySQL, standard port is 3306. So saying if it doesn't use a standard one, then you're gonna have to specify the port, right? It is important to, no to notice this. Uh, I've seen students, so I do WordPress a lot. I still students struggle with this one because WordPress doesn't tell you this. This one is really nice. It tells you you have to do this in WordPress. You have to kind of like <laughs> figure it out. So what this means is, and this is, this is exactly talking about us because we're not using the default one, right? We are using a different data, different port for database. So if we go to preferences and you go to port database, my is using 8889, not the default 3306. So here, when we specify, we got to say localhost and we have to say 8889, okay? Colon, localhost, colon, 8889. Very important. Then the database name is what it is going to create a database with that name. So in my case, for example, I might already have a database with that name because I've installed it many times, right? Test link, test link one. So 
I'm going to match it with the name of the website. I'm creating TasteLink2. So I'm going to create the database called TasteLink2. Table prefix, you can just leave it. It's basically whenever it's creating a table, a bunch of tables for the application, it's going to add a prefix to the name of all the tables. So if you want, you can just give it like two letters and an underscore or something like that. Uh, I just leave it blank for this case, but you know, uh, you should you should add like TL underscore or something like that. Then the database information, user is root, password is root. Let me make sure I type that right. That is the admin uh, user. And then the, you can, I believe you can just create anything here and you will create the user. You can give it anything here, it will create the user for you. Or you can create a user, give it access, then come in user here. But for this demo, I'm just gonna use root for this one as well. Okay, so I'm gonna do root, I'm gonna do root. And we're gonna click on press test link, uh, process test link, okay. So I got everything, okay, creating a connection to the database. Uh, database test link two does not exist. We'll attempt to create it. And everything says okay, uh, process SQL. Uh, so it, it ran this file, everything went fine, right? The installation was successful, right? How easy is that? That was not the case the first time. I'm really, I tried to reproduce the issue I was having. So you might get into this problem. I was seeing a bunch of um, a bunch of uh, that uh, SQLs that run, and at the bottom it says one of them failed. So I went and explored it. So I want to show you. So what the the the, the script that failed was this test link create create tables. There was one of the queries that failed. So let's quickly take a look. So what I did is just to just for my own knowledge, uh, there is a folder called MySQL. You have to find it. Like I'm blind right now. M, 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 where is my SQL? Oh, actually it's under install. It's under install, SQL, uh, my SQL, and there is a file called create tables. So right click this and open in sublime, or not in sublime text, why did I do that? I wanna open it in workbench, open with workbench. So basically when it was trying to run this query, it had an issue something with default value, right? Invalid default value for some date field, some date time field. It's one of these queries. So if you can see, it's running a bunch of queries to create a bunch of databases. So one of them failed. What? So what I want to tell you is all you have to do is run this query here. I will post it in the description of this video. I'll share it somehow, however you want to watch this. However you're watching this, I'll share this. But if you run this query prior to the installation, it will solve it for you. I just want to talk about it because right now everything went well, no issues, it just installed. But when I first did it, it did not do that. I had to run this and have to really investigate. And it also asked me to manually run one of the queries. Uh, I believe it was this one here. It manually required me to run this, so it was easy. All I had to do is open it in Workbench and highlight the, the everything and click on this button here and it run the query and that solved the problem. It actually told me, go get this file and run it. Uh, in this case, maybe because I already did it once and I'm using the same database uh, host, uh, that's probably why it, if it worked uh, successfully, but I just wanna show you because you might end up with that error. Now we're done. So we, could, we, can, we can just go to the same page. We can click here and it tells you the login. The login is name is admin, password is admin. Okay, that's the default. And um, if you're making this public, make sure you change that. So let's just get rid of this install stuff and you go to the same same URL and voila, it's installed and running. You can log in with admin and admin and we are in. It requires you to create a project as soon as you log in. The first thing is you have to create a project, okay? So that's pretty much it. We just installed test link on our local machine and if you are new to testing and if you are practicing, go ahead and start playing around with it. You saw how easy it was to, to install it. You mess something up, you start again and do it again. Okay, it was simple and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you give the video uh, a thumbs up and please do subscribe so you get more information like this. All I do is teach people to become a better engineer. All right, thanks so much.